I am going to discuss about what are the different components in composite material. In the previous lecture, we have already gone through the what are meant by composite materials. Composite materials is nothing but it is a combination of two or more heterogeneous mixtures. One is matrix and second one is the reinforcement. Now in this session we are going to deal with why composites are important and what are the disadvantages and advantages of composite materials, what are the different classification of composite materials, what are the functions of matrix materials. So functions of matrix material is again categorized into two categories, primary phase and reinforcing phase. So first of all, why composites are important? Because they have some different properties like it is lightweight, high strength, strength related to weight, corrosion resistance is high, high impact strength, durability is more possible to achieve combinations of properties not attainable with metals, ceramics and polymers alone. But they have a property of extracting from the natural fibers also. So they can get more strength so that they can withstand the material, they can get the better properties like physical properties like mechanical properties, electrical properties, thermal properties, different types of properties will get a better results. Next, what are the disadvantages of limit disadvantages and the limitations of composite materials? So properties of many important composites are anisotropic. These differ depending on the direction in which they are measured. Many of the polymer based composites are subjected to attack by chemicals or solvents. Composite materials are generally more expensive than when compared to the matrix and reinforcement. When these reinforcement and matrix are combined together, they will get a better enhanced better uh, uh, properties so that they can have more strength, more ductility and more uh, coefficient of the discharge, coefficient of expand, germal expansion etc. So therefore the composite materials are more expensive than, more than other materials. So, there are many manufacturing methods for shaping composite materials are often slowly and costly. So, there are uh, many different methods of the preparation of the composite materials. They are, some of them are hand layer process, solid state fabrication process, spring stick casting, powder metallurgy, so, there are many different types of manufacturing methods. One of the possible classification of composite materials are actually the composite materials are divided into traditional composites and synthetic composites. So, what is meant by traditional composites? It is, it, those are the composite materials that occur in nature and that can be produced by civilians from many years ago. Those are called traditional composites. For example, some of the traditional composites are wood, concrete, etc. Synthetic composites. Synthetic composites are nothing but those can be extracted, manufactured from the industries in which the components are first produced separately and then combined in a controlled way to get a desired structure, properties and desired shape. Those are called as synthetic composites. So, what are the components in a composite material? Nearly composite material has two phases. First one is primary phase and second one is secondary phase. In primary phase, the 
composite materials forms as a matrix within which the secondary phase is embedded. So what is meant by secondary phase? The embedded phase sometimes referred to as reinforcing agent because it usually serves to strengthen the composite. The reinforcing phase may be in the form of fibers, particles or other fibers. So this is some of the examples of fibers. These are fiber reinforced, these are particle reinforced. Here in a cube some particles are there. So this is called as particle reinforced. This is called as laminar composite. In laminar composite one reinforcement it is also called as sandwich type of composite and this is flake composite this is filled composite so now what are the basic functions of matrix material by matrix material we are going to consider as the basic in the composite material this is in uh, matrix as a primary phase so in primary phase, it protects the surface of the fibers from the mechanical abrasion and environment. It will transfer the stresses between fibers. If there are any stresses between the fibers, then the deformation will take place so that the composite material will not get better properties. So to overcome this problem, a matrix material transfers the stresses between the fibers, holds the embedded phase in place, usually enclosing and often concealing it. And next, when a load is applied on the matrix, mat when a load is applied on the composite material, the matrix shares the load with the secondary phase. In some of the cases, deforming so that the stress is essentially borne by the reinforcing agent. In some cases, one, re one material is better than taking two or more metals or materials so that they form a different properties. They will combine those two constituent properties to get a required and better shape. Next. This is called as reinforcing phase. It is also called as secondary phase. In secondary phase, there will be fibers, particles and flakes. These are called as fiber. fibers. These are small, small particles and these are called flakes. The main function of reinforcing phase is to reinforce the primary phase. To be stand with the primary phase. Fibers are the principal load carrying constituents, serves as a strengthen to the composite. Embedded phase is most commonly. Embedded phase is nothing but it is the phase between the uh, primary phase and secondary phase. Uh, these are the following uh, shapes. Some of the shapes, those are first one is fibers, particles, flakes. So that is about composites.